finally, we're getting to the most exciting portion of Flint, activities. Activities are AI-powered learning experiences designed by you for your students. They can act as assistants, assessments, practice buddies, and more. Everything from their personality to what content they know to how they give your students feedback is customizable by you. The types of activities that you can create in Flint are quite endless. You could create a role play with a historical figure or subject matter expert where the students conversationally cover content. You could create a tutor that administers extra practice to students before an assessment. You could also create a practice partner that speaks with a student one-on-one -on -one in a different language. And you could even create a writing coach that gives students extra feedback on their essays. This lesson covers how you can actually create activities. We have a bunch of shortcut options, but you could also create custom ones. And it shows you how you can leverage the builder chat to conversationally develop what you want those activities to look like. Flint will ask you follow-up questions in order to best scaffold your activities. And you could also ask Flint for feedback or for help brainstorming extra ideas all within the builder chat. On top of describing to Flint what you want the activity to look like, I also usually suggest uploading content to contextualize who your students are and what your learning goals for them are. This can include rubrics, extra prompts, examples, readings, and you can upload from your personal computer, online, or a Google Drive. As you're setting up and refining your activity, you can also preview how the experience will look for students. There's the option to do an automated preview where Flint will play through an interaction for you to see. And there's also the option to manually preview it where you pretend to be the student and try out the activity. And finally, once you're happy with the activity, it's super easy to share the link with your students and they can log in with their school email and immediately get started. Once your students start using your activity, there's a lot of information that Flint provides in terms of analytics and monitoring. The activity overview page will update live with all student sessions so you can see their conversations as they happen. And it'll also highlight anything that needs attention where students might be confused, they might not be engaging properly, or just might need additional help from you. Once your students have submitted their sessions, they'll get immediate feedback from Flint in the form of strengths, areas of improvement, and a suggested follow-up, all of which you can see as well. And once three or more students have gotten this feedback, you can see activity analytics that summarizes how your students are doing as a whole. Creating amazing activities in Flint doesn't have to be all that scary. We've designed Flint to not require prompt engineering skills. Really, you just have to apply good communication skills that you probably already have to how you work with Flint. Through using the builder chat, a lot of the prompting is done for you. And turns out AI is really good at prompting other AI. So overall, just remember that it's most important to be specific with what you want, give context about your students, and to iterate and test out your activities. Some of my favorite tips include giving Flint a persona and goal, specifying the feedback mechanisms you'd like Flint to use, scaffolding the process that you want students to go through with Flint, and asking Flint to help you troubleshoot. Once you've gone through the content in this lesson, I would highly recommend jumping into Flint and creating a couple activities. And once you feel like you're getting the hang of that process, feel free to move on to the next lesson. I'll see you there.